Okay, chapter 5 starts with section 5.1, which is on slope. And slope refers to lines. It's a, a property of lines. So when I talk about the slope of a line, what do you think I'm talking about? The slope of a line is the same thing as the, in other words, another word that starts with S, the steepness of a line. Probably guess that, right? Uh, so, and it also refers to the direction of a line. Okay, so for example, if I was to draw a line like this, and another line like this. Which line would you say is, has the greater slope? Well, to answer that, you'd think to yourself, which one is steeper? And I think we can all agree that this one is steeper, so it has the greater slope. But there's a direction involved as well, because I'm going to draw another line. I'm going to make it like this. First of all, I hope you agree with me that that's the steepest line of all, but there's something different about that line than the other ones, isn't there? This one has a different orientation you could say or a different direction so basically these first two lines I, I drew these are positive slopes this last one here I drew this is a negative slope now how do you tell something is a positive or negative slope what you do is you look from left to right and you see what as you look from left to right does it go up or when you look from left to right does it go down think of it like this you know when you watch um, movies and cartoons the simpsons stuff like that and they're in a boardroom and they show profits and they say you know profits this quarter are going down or profits this quarter are going up like this now if profits are going down like this is that a positive thing or a negative thing if you're a business owner that's a negative thing for profits to go down and a line like that is a negatively sloped line how about if profits are doing this they're going like that they're going up well, that's a very positive thing for your business, for profits to go up. So any line like that is a positively sloped line. Um, here, practice a few. If I was to draw this, positive or negative? Positive. How about this? Still positive. How about this? Negative. How about this? Still negative. How about this? Straight across. Haven't done that yet. We'll do that in a little bit. And how about this straight down? Haven't done that either. We'll do that in a little bit. Okay? All right. That was probably way too long. Let's move on. So, slope. First of all, you'll notice that the letter to um, symbolize slope is M. I have no clue why this is. I've done uh, some research on this in the past. No one seems uh, able to figure out why we use the letter uh, M. Um, there are some theories, but none of them have been confirmed. So we need some um, some formulas for slope. How do we figure out slope? Well, basically what slope is, it's a, a measure of the vertical change of a line compared to the horizontal change of a line. Um, another way you could talk about this, this is you use two R words. You use the words rise over run, we say. Rise over run. Okay, rise is like how much does the line that we're interested, how much does it go up or down? and run is how how much does the line go left or right now first thing this equation I like using this the rise over run rather than the vertical change one this rise or run equation here this formula we're going to use this when you have a graph So for example, we're going to find the slope of these two lines. We have the graph. We can see the line. So I'm going to use this formula, rise over run. Okay, Okay. how do you find the, the slope? Well, the first thing you do is you find some pretty points, I call them. It's not what they're really called, but I call them pretty points. And that's where the line crosses exactly at one of these um, intersection points, right? Like something here, 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 here. All these would be pretty points. Well, of course, the line's not going anywhere near there. But if you look down here, there uh, seems to be a pretty point here, and there seems to be one here, and there seems to be one here, and you seem to st it seems to be one there. You see what I mean by pretty points? This, for example, is not a pretty point, because I don't know exactly what that point is. It's like, yeah, in the y value, it's at negative 1, but in the x, it's at negative 2 point I don't know exactly where it's at, but all these points I've marked here, I know exactly where they are. This point is at 4, 4. This point is at 0, 1. This point is at negative 4, negative 2, and this point's at negative 8, negative 5. These are pretty points, I call them. Okay, so you want to pick some pretty points. Let's call them A, B, 
C, and D. Now, you only have to actually pick two of them, but I just want to show you how it doesn't matter which ones you pick. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, take a look at the, remember, the rise and the run. So let's start by looking at the slope of this interval from A to D. We'll look at the extremes here. So slope of A, D. So what you do is you start at one of the um, one of the letters, one of the points. The one I usually start at is the bottom one, like the, whatever one's lowest, but it's up to you. And you're going to make a right triangle. And the way you're going to make a triangle is you're going to rise, right? Remember, it's rise over run. So I'm going to go from here. I'm going to rise as high as I need to go to get up to the D. Sorry, this is so wobbly. And then I'm going to run. Remember, I'm going to um, it's rise over run. So I'm going to run over to the D point. OK, there you go. There's my rise. There's my run. So how much are those? Well, from here up is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. It took 9 steps to move up. Now, I'm going to count the run. Now, notice I don't go like this. Here's what a lot of people do when they're counting their slopes. They go 1, 2, 3, 4. Do you see why that's wrong? You don't count when you just put your pen down. So you put your pen down, and I want to count how far across is it. Here's 1. Now I've moved 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. So if the slope is rise over run, and the rise was 9, and the run was 12, then there's our slope, 9 over 12. But we like to put it in lowest terms. And 9 over 12 is the same as 3 over 4. One last thing, and unfortunately people forget this all the time. We also need to write down whether it is positive or negative slope. So this line here, is that a positive slope or a negative slope? Well, if my profits were going up like that, that'd be a positive thing. So it's definitely a positive slope. Okay, let's try another one. Because what if we didn't pick A and D? What if we picked two different points? Like, let's say, for example, that we pick point BC, uh, the interval BC. So let's find the slope of BC. Again, it's rise over run. So I'm going to start at one of them. I'll start at B. I'm going to rise as far as I need to to get up to the same level C and I'm going to run over to C. There's my right triangle. And how far did we go? We went up 1, 2, 3, and we went over 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, remember it's rise over run, so it's 3 over 4. What did we get the first time? 3 over 4, you get the same answer. Wow, that's awesome. Let's try one more, and I think you probably know what the answer is going to be. Let's find the slope of BD. I'll do one more example just to show you that you, if you want, you can do your triangles differently than I'm doing them. If you want, for example, you could start at the higher point and you could do, so if I started up at D and I want to get to B, I start at D and I have to rise. Well, this is weird, but you have to think of rise when you're doing slopes, that rise can mean up or down. A rise means a change in the uh, vertical direction. So I'm going to rise downwards, I know that's weird, but I'm rising downwards from D all the way down to B, and then I'm running to the left this time to get over to B. So my triangle's are below the line here. It doesn't matter. You could have done it the other way, right? I could have started at B and gone all the way up to here and over to D. That's the way I usually do it. But you can also start at the top point and go down. What was the rise here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The rise is 6. Or if you want to be really specific, it's negative 6. I don't do it this way because I find it gets people confused. But I'll just show you that since you move down, it would be negative 6. And then how far do we run? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But since we move to the left, it's negative 8. So our slope is rise, negative 6, over run, negative 8. And negative 6 over negative 8 is positive 3 quarters. Now, just to show you how I do that, I find the negatives people get people mixed up a lot. So all I do, even if I draw my triangle like this, I just say, OK, this distance here is 6. My rise distance is 6. This distance here is 8. My run distance is 8. So the slope is uh, 6 over 8, which is the same as 3 over 4. And then I ask myself, is that a positive slope or a negative slope? Oh, it's a positive slope, so I'll just leave it positive. So I just ask myself at the start or the end whether it's a positive or negative slope. I don't worry about the positives and negatives when I'm counting. All right, let's do another one. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find some pretty points. So where are the pretty points here? Well, I see one there. And I'd say there and there. And I think there and there. Oftentimes, they'll have them marked for you because uh, it can be kind of difficult to tell if it exactly goes through some of the, the pretty points. OK, let's, get, uh, let's call them A, B, 
C, D, and E. Don't worry, we're not going to do too many of them. Okay, first thing we'll do is we'll find the slope of A, B. So to get the slope of AB, I'm not going to use that obnoxious pink this time. That was a little disappointing. Uh, the slope of AB, I'll start at uh, A this time. Um, and I to get to B, I have to go down and then across. Here's my rise. There's my run. Okay, how much was the rise? The rise was 1, or if you want, negative 1. And the run was 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's positive 4, so it's negative 1 over 4. So that's what we should get. Anyway, the way I do it, as I said, is I just say this distance is 1, the run distance is 4, and then I ask myself, is this a positive slope or is this a negative slope? It's a negative slope. Profits are going down here, so it's negative 1 over 4. Okay, slope of, which one should we do this time? Let's do BE. BE. So we're um, starting where we're, I'll start at E this time, and I'll rise up to the B, and then I'll run over to the B. Okay, what was my rise? My rise was 1, 2, 3, and my run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, or if you want, because I had to move to the left, negative 12. So it's 3 over negative 12. I'm just going to put 3 over 12, which is the same as 1 over 4, and I don't forget to ask myself, is this a positive or negative slope, this line? Well, of course, it's the same. It's the same line, so it's negative 1 over 4. And last one I'll do is slope of BD equals, okay, we'll just run fast, BD. So we're going here, your BD eyes, right? It's, it's not even funny, but. Okay, down 2 and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So down 2 over 8, so it's 2 over 8. And surprise, surprise, 2 over 8 is the same as 1 over 4. And don't forget to ask yourself whether the slope's positive or negative, and it's negative, and we get negative 1 over 4. Okay, look at that. Isn't this an important fact? Yes. It doesn't matter which two points you pick on the line. Any two points will work. Um, you can get the slope by uh, doing rise over run with the two points. You could even use non-pretty points if you knew exactly what the point was. But uh, we don't really can't really figure out what those points are, so we don't use them. Okay, so that is how you find the slope of a line when you have the graph. What if you don't have the graph? Well, if you don't have the graph, if they just lay, give you some points, what you use is change in y equals change in x. Have you seen this, this triangle before? This triangle, you'll see it in physics a lot, I think. And this triangle right here means change in. So you're looking at the change in the y values um, compared to the change in the x values. There's another way people write this. It's actually very common, but I don't like it so much. It is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now these here, pick one of them, you don't have to use both of them, but one of these you're going to use when you only have points. Uh, so for example, here we go. If we want to find the slope of a line that passes through these two points, one way you could do it is you could graph the points and then do the rise over run thing we just did. But we don't want to do that. We want a faster method. So we're going to use one of the formulas that we just talked about. Well, the one that I like to use is m equals change in y, that's what the triangle means, change in, over change in x. Okay, so let's think of these points here. In any, coordinate, uh, any ordered pair, the first value is an x and the second value is a y. It's the same in this one. This first one's an x, second one's a y. Okay, when it says change in y, what we want to know is what's the difference between the two y values? Well, if I'm looking for a difference, what am I doing? I'm subtracting. So I'm doing, for example, 3, which is one y value, take away 1, which is another y value. And then dividing it by, now I want the change in x's. So I have to do um, subtract the x's. But notice you must subtract them in the same order. If I did 3 minus 1, I now must do negative 4, take away 4. Right? Because I did this point first, I have to do this point first with the x's too. Okay, let's see what we get. 3 take away 1 is 2. And negative 4, take away another 4. I'm sorry, you're going to have to be good at integers here. Negative 4, take away another 4 is negative 8. Oh, 2 over negative 8. 2 over 8 is the same as 1 over 4. And it's just one negative. So I'll put the negative. You could keep it in the bottom, but we usually put it on top or out front. So there's my answer, negative 1 over 4. By the way, this example right here, 
It's exactly the same as the example we just did way down here. The points that I um, just mentioned that the line was going through were, uh, I'll show you that they're exactly the same. It said that they were going through negative 4, 3, which is right there, and 4, 1, which is right here. In other words, what we just found was the slope of the line that we were just talking about. So we better have gotten the same answer, negative 1 quarter. Yes, negative 1 quarter. See, it works. It's exactly the same thing. So that's great. Now, some people might say at this point, well, how do you know which one to do first? Like, should I go 3 minus 1 or 1 minus 3? Guess what? It doesn't matter. For example, I'll get this uh, slope by using the same formula, m equals change in y divided by change of x. But let's start by doing the change of y's, subtracting the y's, by doing this one first. So 1 minus 3 would go on top. And what would go on the bottom is, you can't do negative 4 take away 4 anymore because we did 1 take away 3. We did this y value take away this y value. You have to do this x value take away this x value. 4 take away negative 4. This is the biggest problem people have with this, is they mix it up which one should be subtracting. Anyway, 1 take away 3 is t negative 2. 4 take away negative 4 is positive 8. And negative 2 over 8 is the same as negative 1 over 4. Yes, we get the same answer. It works. Okay, here's another one, and this time I'll use the other formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is really just the same thing. It's just they've added some more letters and numbers and stuff in here. And I think this, I, I find that this confuses people. So what you do is you, again, think of this first thing as being an x and second one being a y. And this is an x and this is a y. But then you go one step further. You actually assign them little numbers. Okay, so pretend this point here is the first point doesn't have to be. You could consider this the first point. But let's say this is the first point. So then this is x1. It's the x value of the first point. And this is y1. Everyone always thinks that's y2 because it's the second number here. No, this is y1 because it's the y value of the first point. This is my second point, right? So this is the x value of the second point, And this is the y value of the second point. And then all you do is you plug it into the equation here. So y2 is what number? Negative 5 take away y1, which is negative 2, over x2, which is negative 8, take away x1, which is 4. Negative 5 take away negative 2 is negative 3. Negative 8 take away 4 is negative 12. Okay, two negatives are going to make a positive, and 3 over 12 is 1 over 4. We're done. All right, so really this formula that I showed you here, it's exactly the same as what you did up here. I just find it's more complicated because people get all confused about whether this is y1 or y2 or whatever. So I'm going to do this one again, but I'll do it in the opposite order, and I'll use the other formula. I'll just use change of y over change of x. So notice when we did it up here, we started with the negative 5 as our y value. Let's start with the negative 2. So I want to find the difference in the y values. So I'm going to do negative 2, take away the other y value, which is negative 5, and then I'm going to subtract the x's, and I have to do it in the same order. Since I did negative 2, take away negative 5, I have to do 4, take away negative 8. Negative 2, take away negative 5 is 3. 4, take away negative 8 is positive 12. 3 over 12 is 1, 4. You get the same answer. All right, you don't have to, of course, you don't have to do this twice. You just have to do it once. I just want to show you that it always works. Okay, last, t last thing. I told you that um, we would need to look at uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines. These are kind of exceptions and see what happens with them. Um, I'm sorry this line isn't quite exactly where it should be. It's supposed to be right on the 5. Can we just pretend? It doesn't actually make a difference. Actually, it doesn't make a difference at all, so let's not worry about it. Okay, if we wanted to know the slope of these lines, well, we have the graph. So let's use our uh, formula, slope equals rise over run. Okay, we said we wanted two pretty points. Well, it would have been nice if I had them right on pretty points. Let's just pretend these are pretty points, or you'll see in a second it doesn't actually matter. So I'm just going to pick any two points. They're all pretty points if it was right on the line. So I'll pick these two. It makes no difference. Okay, if I'm going from here to here, how much do I have to rise to get from there to there? Well, I don't rise at all. It's the same level. So the rise is 0. How much do I have to run? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0 over 5. What's 0 over 5? 0. It doesn't matter which points you pick on here. You're always rising 0. And 0 divided by anything is 0. OK, so this is a key here. If it's a horizontal line, this is horizontal, right? If it's a horizontal line, it will always have a slope of 0. How about a vertical line? 
Okay, this one does have pretty points, which is nice. Let's pick some points on here. It doesn't matter which ones. I'll pick here and I'll pick there. Slope equals. We have the graph, so I'll put rise over run. How much do you have to rise from one to get to the other? Well, I'll start down here. I have to rise one, two, three, four, five. How much do I have to run to get from one to the other? You don't run at all. They're ones right on top of each other. So it's five divided by zero. And that equals zero? No, it does not equal zero. It equals undefined. You can't do that. This one is undefined, we say, or no slope. If there's a vertical line, it's undefined. It has undefined slope, or it has no slope. You say one of those two things. So that's very important. That's for vertical lines. Um, should I write that in there? Vertical line equals undefined slope. Horizontal line. Now notice, this doesn't mean this zero here doesn't mean no. It doesn't mean no slope. It means zero slope, right? The slope equals zero. Uh, now, sometimes people have troubles remembering this, so here's another one of my ridiculous memory devices. If you have a line like this, a horizontal line, or a vertical line, and you're confused about whether it is uh, zero, or whether it's undefined, or no slope, or whatever, do this. You could easily turn this horizontal line into a z, and so it's zero. The slope of this line is zero. This vertical line you could easily turn into an n, so it's no slope. Or maybe you're the sort of person who doesn't like using the term no slope. You like using the more mathematical sounding undefined. That's no problem either. Undefined. Okay? So that's awesome. I love it. Um, undefined, I guess I should write there. Alright, so horizontal line, zero slope. Vertical lines, no slope or undefined. Some lines are positively sloped like all these ones. Some lines are negatively sloped like all these ones. Slopes are great. Uh, have a good day and see you soon.